Let's review the CompTIA Network Plus troubleshooting process. And this is for the N10006. The first step is to identify the problem. In this step, a technician gathers information, identifies symptoms, questions users, and determines if anything has changed recently. So you want to identify what the problem is. Let's say that there's a problem and some of the users are not gaining connectivity. And one of the users said that there's no link light on their router slash wireless access point. And so you've identified the problem. Users are not getting connectivity. Well, we can talk about that more. We can say, okay, well, let's look at really what's going on here. But to aid us in doing that, we can use the rest of the troubleshooting process. Step two is to establish a theory of probable cause. You want to establish a theory and you want to start with the simple solutions. What is the simple stuff? You know, what are the simple, what are the basic culprits behind this? And so if we take a look here, once again, we're going to see right off the bat that there's nothing connected to the power ports. And on most of today's routers, you need a power connection. You have to have something plugged in. You have to have this guy plugged in to have power. And yeah, of course, you're not going to get any link lights here because there is no power to the device. So nothing's going to light up. And the other thing is, uh, we said that users are not getting access. They're not getting connectivity. But really, if we look here, there's only one client connection as far as the wired connection goes. We don't know about the wireless, but there's only one connection for wired. And this blue area is the wired connection. Then if we take it a little further, we've got what looks to be our internet connection here. That's the green connection. And we have a cable here which looks like it's wired correctly. But if we examine further and look at the other end of the cable, we'll see that this guy is actually wired white green on the other end. And compare, compare those two, we've got white orange, which is 568B. And over here we got white green, which is 568A. That's a crossover cable. That's most likely not what we should be using to connect this guy, which most likely will go to a cable modem or some type of other network interface device, you would just use a straight through cable with these normally, not a crossover cable. You never know. It depends on what you're doing, but generally that's going to be the case. So that was another issue that we found. But the main culprit, what I am establishing as the theory of probable cause for why users can't connect is it's not plugged in. Look for the simple solutions. Always look for the simple solutions. So that's step two. We establish the theory. Then we go to step three, and that is to test the theory to determine the cause. So we would plug that guy in and make sure it works and make sure we get link lights. If it didn't work and we still couldn't have connectivity, well, then we'd go back to step two and establish a new theory going on to something perhaps a little bit more complicated. You know, maybe it is also a problem with that crossover cable, the type of cable you have connected to the internet connection or how the other clients are wired or how they're connecting wirelessly. Who knows? But we would keep going back until we find a theory that works back and forth between step two and step three. Now, once we've tested the theory to determine that cause and it tests positive, then we move on to step four which is to establish a plan of action to resolve the problem and identify potential effects. Well, in this case, it's pretty simple. You know, we plug it in, we connect everything up, we make sure everything's working. And as far as identifying potential effects, uh, you know, there might not be too much there. If you have a more in-depth problem, you know, it could be a cabling problem. It could be that things weren't wired correctly. And it could be that other users might be affected by it, or there could be problems with other equipment. So you have to identify what those potential effects are. And once we figured out what the plan of action is going to be in step four, then we move to step five and we implement it. We implement the solution and you know, we plug it in, we connect everything up, we make sure it's all working. And if it's a more in-depth problem, 
that's where step five really comes in. We implement the solution as much as we can. You know, we might need to add a switch for additional uh, users, for additional computers. You might need to use different cabling. So we need to implement that solution fully or we escalate as necessary. If we can't implement it ourselves, we might need to get other technicians involved or a manager or a supervisor or a higher level of tech support, a uh, higher level from the help desk, whatever it might be, we might need to escalate that. That's step five. Step six is to verify full system functionality. You know, we don't want to just check that we have link lights. We also want to check that all the users in question that are connecting through this device can connect to what they should be able to connect to, uh, to the internet, download email, check websites, and so on. And the initial tests you might do when you're verifying uh, full system functionality is to uh, do a ping or do a couple other tests within the command prompt. So step six, verify full system functionality. And if applicable, implement preventative measures. And you want to prevent this from happening again. You know, maybe the power plug got kicked out for some reason. Maybe it can be, uh, maybe you can do a little bit of cable management and uh, route it in such a way where that won't happen again. And finally, step seven, document findings, actions, and outcomes. What did you find out about this? What was the problem? What actions did you take? What was the final outcome? Is everybody happy? Now, really, documentation should have started from step one, uh, especially if you're doing this within a trouble ticketing system. You're documenting the whole process. Who uh, alerted you to the problem? How, what questions did you ask? How did you identify the problem? What probable causes did you think there might be? Was there more than one that you had to test? What was your plan of action? And how did you implement the solution? And how did you verify how did you test full system functionality? So really you should have been documenting the whole time. And quite often you'll have to have people sign off on this. The person who started the ticket, perhaps maybe your manager, it all depends on your company policy. So those are the seven steps. And, uh, you know, you might've noticed a couple other things. For example, on this guy, this is a wireless G router with a bunch of sticky stuff on the bottom. You know, this is just a prop at this point. I don't use this. It's, old it's dirty it's not going to give very good uh performance you know this thing it's not going to be able to handle that many people in a wired fashion at least this thing probably has seen better days and so you know we don't actually use this so what we'd really want to do is consider upgrading to something faster and better and that's really part of your troubleshooting process as well uh and that should be part of your documentation in step seven so let's review the seven step process now. Step one, identify the problem. Very important step. You're not doing anything here. You are right now gathering information, identifying symptoms, questioning users, determining if anything has changed recently, but you're not actually doing anything. You're investigating, you're identifying the problem. Probably the most important step to be honest with you, because if you mess this one up, it's just going to flow through the rest of the troubleshooting process. Step two, establish a theory of probable cause. Step three, test the theory to determine cause. Step four, establish a plan of action to resolve the problem and identify potential effects. Step five, implement the solution or escalate as necessary. Step six, verify full system functionality, and if applicable, implement preventative measures or preventive measures, if you want to say it that way. Step seven, document findings, actions, and outcomes. And as I mentioned, you should be documenting the whole time. And that is super important also because documentation is something that you can refer to later. And other techs on your team could refer to it later. And that could really save you a lot of time in the long run. Document in a smart way, in a smart, efficient way, and it can really help you to save time later on down the line. So that's the seven-step process for the Network Plus for N10-006. 
That's it for this video. I'm Dave Prouse. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me at my website, www.davidlprouse.com.